Hey. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Good morning. Yeah, we're good. We're good. We've just been doing stuff. Nighttime here, so you know. <laughs> so thank you guys again for doing this. I appreciate it. Yeah, of course. We honestly, as soon as we saw School of Rock in the, in the email, we were like, no doubt about it. It's happening. I told my girlfriend. We were like, what a cool movie. <laughs> That's so sweet. Yeah, so Wagner's the building where um, Jack Black's in the van, and he's pulling up to the school. That's where we have class. Right. That's so funny. Awesome. Goddamn. <laughs> I'm going to watch that movie again and just, like, look at Wagner on Google Earth or whatever and just be like, <laughs> I had to rewatch it because I was like, oh, wait, I knew, like, our school was in the movie, but I didn't really remember. It was a long time since I saw it. But actually, a lot of the scenes were filmed where I'm from on Staten Island, so it was pretty cool to be. Yeah, I mean, we'd love to go to New York in general, and, like, Staten Island looks pretty cool. Just, I don't know, that whole vibe of New York. I like it. <laughs> yeah, like, Staten Island's part of the city, but everyone forgets it's part of the city because it's very different environment-wise. <laughs> we have trees, so. There are actual <laughs> trees. Goddamn. <laughs> Can y'all introduce yourselves and tell me a fun fact about you? Okay, um, you start. Oh, God. I was like, <laughs> I hope he starts. All right. I am Cooper. I play the drums. And that is my brother right there. We came from the same womb. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Josh. I play the guitar. Uh, I sing. And you didn't say a fun fact. Yeah, the fun fact was that we came from the same womb. That's not fun. <laughs> my fun fact is I had a bump on my wrist for like three years. It, it felt like a third wrist. And then one day it just disappeared. True. And all the doctors were so stumped. They x-rayed on it. They tried to figure it out. It was like, it wasn't cartilage, but it was something along those lines. And then it just vanished. And like, I felt around my arm to see if it had like moved. Can't find it. Oh it's been God. like 10 years. So we yeah, have a question good. that was asked at our freshman orientation that we ask anyone. If you can be any item in the kitchen, what would you be and why? Oh, dude. 100% is... tongs. Extended hands that don't get burnt. Genius. It's safe. It's convenient. You can have it on you at all times. You can literally do everything with them. I want to be the tongs. <laughs> I, I would be the oven mitt because you get to see baked goods all the time. And, like, you get to smell them probably if you got little oven mitt noses. And when you wear out, you just end up burning the people you love. Yeah, so <laughs> it's a win-win. <laughs> it's a win. <laughs> okay, so I also want to know, how did you guys pick your respective instruments? Yeah, um, Cooper used to play the bass, and I kind of, I always thought that just guitar looked the coolest, and that's all I cared about before I could even play, before I even, like, owned a guitar. I just saw them, and I was like, ah, that's a, that's a cool look. Like, I don't want to be sitting, I want to be, I want to be strumming and doing whatever that is. And then I started learning it, and it was actually, like, the funnest instrument. Um, and then I started singing, because... Uh, honestly, I think it was because it was just the one, like, control variable in all music. Like, there are so many different instruments and everything, but then people are always singing, so I felt like I could do, like, any song if I knew how to sing. So that was cool. Uh, what um, about drums? <laughs> I, I decided to play drums because they're, like, like... He's aggressive. They're, they're just, like, boom, boom, you know, and I was always, like... Wanted to go boom boom on things, but nothing ever made that sound until I found drums, and I was like, "Ah, oh, they they well, go like, they go boom boom." <laughs> bass makes a boom boom when you did but, that, and you did pick up bass for your okay. first instrument. I played, but it wasn't quite boom boomy, you know. I played <laughs> the bass, and I realized that I was boom booming too much on it, and like the bass teacher got annoyed, and he was like, "Just play the drums." I was like, "That was the ah fantastic <laughs> point, fantastic point." Yeah. Here we are. Here we are. Those who dream. <laughs> I feel like the instrument uh, picks the person, not necessarily the person picks the instrument. So it's kind of fun to see where people. Yeah, yeah it's like True. the wand from Harry yeah, Potter. Yeah, like you can't fight that choice. Like it just happens. <laughs> yeah, that's how. It felt. I hope you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Harry Potter. Yeah, Marvel. <laughs> What's your favorite album in your personal collection? Yeah. Oh, dude. Who has collections of albums? Like, like I still do. <laughs> Honestly, okay. Um, this narrows it down to only things we have, like physically. Yeah, my favorite album from like my album collection, and yes, I do have an album collection. I love uh, "Chase This Light" by Jimmy World, and I think Cooper and I can both agree on that. That is a 
It's a nostalgic album. It is a banging album. It is an everything album. Love it. Great. Really great. Thank you. I, that came out sarcastic. That is great. Yeah, um, I know. <laughs> so I, when I was like nine years old, I got every single Good Charlotte album, um, like a, a oh, yeah, you, like you, a you box set of them. And but I still think my favorite is the Young and the Hopeless. You know, oh, that yeah. album. Oh, like what are the what friggin' songs are on that? Like the Young and the Hopeless. You got the anthem. Oh, uh, uh, others. Yeah, you no, you got you got um <laughs> I'm like I'm it's pretty my... sure SOS was on that. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes, great oh, album. Good. All the nostalgia. Yeah, it was fantastic. Leads to my next <laughs> question. What music are you currently listening to? Oh, oh man, I've been listening to a lot of simple creatures. <laughs> I'm looking at it right now on my laptop. Yeah, simple creatures with all type blows, Alex and, and Mark Hoppus, great stuff. Um honestly, like I mean <laughs> Carly Ray Jepsen. <laughs> what a banging just discography she has. Like we've been going back in time. And like those albums for me especially, like they hold such specific memories. Like I remember going up like the PCH in California and like just listening on the bus. It'd be like a four hour bus ride or something. And just like falling asleep to the consecutive albums back to back and waking up and I've just got Carly Ray Jepsen in my head. <laughs> you wake up, you're like Banger after banger. <laughs> yeah. How does she do it? It's insane. Um, I I cannot think for some reason. Like I I'm listening to so much right now, and then my brain is like, I'm empty. <laughs> but um, I'm gonna say Poppy. I'm be listening yeah, to oh, a lot the new of Poppy her stuff. record. Is so good. So great. Five seconds of summer. Yeah. Calm. Definitely good. New all time low album. Obviously. Oh my god, we didn't even mention oh. that. Yeah, that is incredible. Like pretty much, yeah. Anything Zach Servini's worked on is just mint <laughs> so <laughs> nice man good stuff yeah what musicians inspire <laughs> you to be a better musician well i mean like yeah just speaking of all time low all time low was like the reason i started wanting to like play music live and just like both of us really yeah right? like connect with the crowd and kind of like use it as more of a like I get. I guess in a way, it's like you know, you start out just playing to yourself, and you're really just like in your own little world of music. But that kind of like you know, their live DVD and just the way they perform, it was kind of like it feels like it should be a shared experience. And that was the first kind of like light bulb moment. I was like, ah, we can we can all be a part of this. Like I don't have to be alone in my room playing guitar. <laughs> mm. Definitely earlier on for me, it was the same like all time mm -hmm. low. But even just recently, seeing artists like. Young blood, like when we saw him live, yeah. just seeing the absolutely like captivating live show, I was like, wow! I did not know it was possible to have that much energy. Yeah, dude. Like, and Twenty One Pilots, I've oh seen goodness, them like yes. five times. They just put on an incredible live show. Like, it just reminds us like to co constantly be trying to raise the bar yeah. and never like settle for good. It's gonna yeah. be amazing. Yeah. Well, like perfect. we literally we leave the show and we're like. Goodness me, I want to play a show right now. Like, yeah. It's like we, 12 a.m., I want to play that. a show. We always say that. It's uh, like, especially just seeing like your favorite artist live and just like being a part of that whole atmosphere, being a part of the experience and everything. It's so like, it just, you can't help but just like feel like you're in a dream. And that's like such a cool feeling on one side, but then to like, you know, give that feeling to others is insane as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it really is. What is the weirdest or funniest question you've ever been asked in the interview before? Five minutes ago, when someone <laughs> when someone asked us, um, uh, wait, what was it? What did he say? The we movie ruined director? it already. Oh, right, yeah, no, that wasn't an interview. We, we were on a meeting like just before this, okay. um, and not just before, it was like three hours. Um, but he was like, if if your band was a movie director, what? movie director would you guys be <laughs> we had to like seriously think because we like we watch so many movies and we love like all these different kind of styles and these people that make it but then like off the top of our head we were like uh <laughs> i guess i didn't think of that yeah that, um, i mean that that's mine do you have one <clears throat> uh honestly no i i can <laughs> you know maybe i'll think of it later in the podcast and you'll be on a different question and i'll just blurt it out like out of context so we'll let it happen if that, that's we have the a case. Question that normally follows us. So 
When an artist passes away, do you think their work should be released after they died, or should it not? I think it's cool, especially like if there was a whole bunch of stuff that wasn't addressed while they're still alive and still kind of creating. And, you know, I know some people look at it as kind of like almost a bit disrespectful because they, the artist doesn't have, you know, like can't give consent or anything to it. But at the same time, I think like for me personally, if I die tomorrow, really hope I don't, but you know, if I did, then my hard drive of songs and everything, like these are all things that I've written to not just share with myself. It's something I want to eventually share with everyone. And that's why it's so heartbreaking when like songs don't make the record or, you know, like you don't get to get your favorite song on, on the album or whatever. And so I think it's actually a pretty cool idea. And like Prince, like when he died, there was like a vault of like a thousand songs that were just unreleased completely. And he recorded it in, in the studio that he, like, lived in. And I think that's amazing. And, you know, like, they kind of got released incrementally. But I think that's what he would have wanted. And, you know, not to speak for everyone, but from me personally, I don't know, man. I think it'd be cool if, like, you know, if I'm no longer there to, like, be able to still share this. It's like your existence doesn't just stop there. It still kind of, like, continues in another form, which mm. is cool. <laughs> yeah, I, I completely agree with that. Like... It's, it's an interesting thing because it wouldn't be released the way the artist would want it to be released. But it, the, the fact that it's released at all is it's special. It's kind of what they'd want yeah, in general, exactly. like, you know, so to speak. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I am for it. I think it's a good thing. So this question came about because of the Little Peep songs that were released that kind of sound like bedroom demos. And then, right. Yeah. yeah. And then Mac Miller's album came out, which we thought was tastefully done since... Um, he worked with his producer on it, and his family gave consent. So, yeah, right. There you go. Yeah, and that's just another level of it. You know, their their family can obviously kind of speak on their behalf, but at the same time, it's like even if they don't specifically know what he wanted, like in terms of release or which ones he wanted first, it's like in general, yeah, he would have wanted to show people this. Like, yeah. The reason we ask this is we want to bring awareness to it because. It is happening more so in today's day and age, and we want to try to bring up the topic of like artist wills or putting this in a contract, since some people yeah. don't want like voice memos put out or certain things right. from a hard drive. So it's pretty interesting to see the two sides. Yeah, I, I've never thought about that side of it. So like, I agree though that something like contracts and wills would be like super helpful for that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I literally never thought of it. But yeah, you're right. Like, you know, especially in 2020 and with just like, you know, everything that's going on, things are really uncertain and people are here and people are not. And it kind of, if you don't think about it, then we kind of just keep on not knowing for as long as this keeps happening and it like inevitably will keep happening. So why not figure out a system? So we're going to segue to talking about your latest release, Monster. <laughs> so, Yay! Yeah. That's a song. <laughs> Can you tell me the, about the story behind the song? Yeah. Um, I wrote it when I was very much kind of like... There's a lot of confusion in Monster. It kind of follows on from Violet in a sense that, like, if Violet feels like you're becoming somebody that you never thought that you would be, like, you, you feel yourself kind of evolving into this like maybe, maybe it's a, a shadow of your parents or something or just like you know the people you're surrounded with either way you're kind of becoming something that in a sense you always dreaded but then monster is the stage of that where you're there you're in the present you're not who you want to be but you're existing and it's like you know looking in the mirror is kind of a bit of a <laughs> salty experience but monster really talks about like I'm kind of trying to figure out how the world sees me as a person. And like, if I was, if I was, you know, like one of my friends or one of the people I talk to or a fan or whatever, like if I was just someone other than myself, how would I view me? And would that be positive or would it be kind of distorted by, you know, my personal view on myself? And so it's a very confused song about like, yeah, like, trying to figure out your place in the world and, and, you know, at the same time, not really knowing it. It's it's super interesting because, like, it was such a personal experience to Josh. But the second he started telling me about it, I was like, 
oh, like, I, I feel that exact same thing. And, like, the yeah. fact that we released it and all these people were like, oh, I feel that exact same thing. The fact that so many people just resonated with it immediately and, like, just got it. Like, I mean, there's a lot of metaphors in there. There's a lot of, like, ways that we're describing <laughs> these feelings and people were like, oh, yeah, I, I know the one. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I didn't, and I say I didn't write it, like, we both wrote the song, but, like, I kind of just, like, you know, went crazy on the lyrics and just wrote out everything that was in my head and then had to kind of tame it back to, like, what could be a song. But, um, like, Monster was, like, a five-page poem to begin with, <laughs> but it's, like, yeah, I didn't really write it to be, like, oh, I'm gonna write this to be relatable, and I know that everyone's gonna feel this. Like, I was just writing what was going on in that moment, but it is such a nice feeling to put it out into the world and just, like, have person after person after person be, like, oh my god, I couldn't describe this feeling, but, like, you've just told me about it right now yeah. to me, and I, I can understand it a bit more. I can kind of grasp it and tame it or whatever they need to do. And that's why we thought it'd be cool to do the Monster Art Challenge, mm. because it is such a personal experience for people, and they take it in different ways. And, yeah. you know, what better way to express that? Like, so many people have done art that has captured the essence of it perfectly, but also put, like, their own personal, like, how it's sort of affects them yeah. into the art. And it's, like, it's so cool to see. It's literally, like, that effect of, you know, me writing a song and people going, like, oh, like, I didn't know I could describe that. That's happening back to us. Like, they're putting their twist on Monster and kind of reimagining, not reimagining, but, like, you know, expanding on this idea that it originally was. And we're looking at it like, oh, my God, like, yeah, I feel that. Like, <laughs> that's that's totally right. So it's so cool, like, it, it does work really both ways. I love how you kind of spoke about it was more of a spur of the moment type of song, in a sense, how it was like this five-page poem, and then you kind of brought it together. I think those songs that are written based on, like, pure emotion and just, like, this is how it is, kind of the best way to connect with other people, since music kind of brings people together in a sense. It's in its purest form is the best type of feeling, like, whether it's through lyrics or um, even instrumentals, it's just a way to make people think about things that maybe they haven't thought about before. Yeah, and it, it's, you know, like you just said, it kind of, it doesn't matter if you're in the next city or in the next state or the next country, like, it doesn't, it doesn't get bound by that. Like, music is such a cool thing because you can literally... Two people can listen to the same song at the same time and feel completely different emotions, but at the same time kind of like connect through this common bond as well. And I think that's awesome, especially, you know, like just thinking back to when the actual song part of it was written. Like I was in my girlfriend's living room. We were about to go out for dinner and I was like playing on her mom's guitar and I did that like dun, 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 and like voice memoed it. Then we went out to dinner and um, that, like that was all I thought of it. And then, you know, to kind of go from that, it goes in little stages building up to what would become a song. It's just, it's wacky. Like, people have heard it, like, in the U.S. And it's just kind of, it's a weird journey that it goes on. And it's very much like sending your child off to school. And you're kind of like, oh, I don't know what's going to happen to it. I hope it's all right. But it's, it's cool as well. <laughs> yeah. I feel like when music is released into the world, it kind of now belongs to so many people, in a sense. Like... <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of, people take it as their own, and as yeah, you said, yeah. it can connect with anyone over anything. So, I love yeah. that. Sure. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna jump to my next question, which is related to this. What, what is your favorite part of a song that you've written? Ooh, ooh. these are great questions. Yeah. <laughs> Man. <laughs> um, I think that, like, well, like, with different songs, we kind of, like, there's just like a feeling of like kind of adrenaline you get and you know if, if a whole song's good that's great but then there are some parts in it like maybe it's like this one cool thing that the drums do before the pre-chorus that you're just like oh yes you nailed it like it's just like hitting that vibe on the head um so honestly i'm, I'm like i'm sifting through them in my head there's a lot like um Red Chair, I mean, has that part after the bridge vocals or it just goes into, like, saxophone and it's, like, all smashing. Maybe, maybe that's, like, mainly live when mm -hmm. we do that. Like, when we play that sure. part live, when I'm done singing, Cooper and I just go crazy on it. Uh, that's really fun. Mm -hmm. 
Um, yeah, I was, like moments like that that feel just like you're like, oh, I can't contain it. Yeah, um, I was just gonna go super general, not mention any song, and just say like, like when I'm writing, like my favorite thing, and like in the writing process, my favorite thing is when a big risk like pays off. Like you're like, this shouldn't work, this should not work, but you do it anyway because you just have that weird feeling, and then you listen back, and you're like, why? How did that work? That like I've got now that like adrenaline feeling, and it just. I don't know. It's yeah. just like, I'm like, yeah, I can't find the words yeah, for it. Yeah, well, like, it, it happens happy. when you're writing, but then as well, like, if you're trying something new live, or, like, you, you kind of sync up a part that you're really happy with, and you're like, uh, you know, it, it could be a thing, let's just try jamming it, and you play it, and, like, you make eye contact, you're like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, exactly. it's just sweet, and then when you actually play that to people, that moment is, like, forever kind of embedded in that little bit of the song and you'll always feel that emotion no matter what like mm. you're coming back to that first time that you experimented with it or like you know took a risk with it that is a great answer like we we do that all the time it happens so often yeah like and like again with red chair live like that's that's one of those moments and cooper does is like and it just like goes off and it's so much fun and it's it's like a certain feeling and the audience can feel it as well and everything just feels very very right. Yeah, I was gonna say right. <laughs> right. <laughs> they left. <laughs> so, like, disagree. <laughs> I feel like live music has its very own special place because, like, sometimes listening to a studio recording is always great, but hearing the song live, you can hear so much more that you might not have heard originally in the recorded yeah. version. Hundred mm, percent. And like, I love the idea of like creating, you know, like making the live show. A completely different experience to what the studio version might be because it's it's all cool to like try and recreate the studio version exactly live and people are like oh this is cool it's just louder and you're there but like you know when when you kind of dabble with things like little little preludes or something or like bits in the in the middle of the song that kind of break down or even even just completely like just dropping the song down mm. like a tone or something or half a step mm. and kind of making it its own thing and changing up the instruments a bit like that's something we've always tried to do with our live songs is kind of like not start with a blank slate but start a lot further back than just having the song and playing the instruments that are in the song so cool that you yeah. Do that. <laughs> yeah well it, it's fun and it makes live shows their own kind of contained universe as well so you mm -hmm. can listen to the record or you know like yeah like listen on spotify and stuff but when you hear it live, not only is it like there in front of you and you're a part of the whole experience, but you're hearing new sounds too and you're like experiencing all these new things for the very first time. And that feels cool. <laughs> that feels cool <laughs> and, and nice. It's a nice and cool thing. <laughs> so you mentioned Spotify. Uh, what are your thoughts on streaming services like Spotify? Yeah, I mean like... <laughs> they they literally play the songs and <laughs> they they do that very well. Josh <laughs> Mayer, everybody, thank you, thank you. Uh, <laughs> no, but like I mean, in terms of like you know Apple Music, Spotify, all that, I don't know. I think I think it's just cool that like people get to listen to full songs for you know like free, in a sense. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Our, our thing has always been being super, super adaptable. Like, we will never go, like, oh, this thing has changed in the music industry. Oh, well, like, guess we're screwed. We're always like, here's our response to it straight away. Yeah. So when, like, iTunes started to decline and streaming was taking over, like, we literally are just like, cool. That's where people are listening to our songs. Like, yeah. go for it. Listen to our songs. That's all we want you to do. Like, we don't need your money from iTunes or whatever. Like, if you want to support us properly you'll buy our merch and you'll come to our shows. So I think if you want to, like, stream the song all day on repeat, like... Do that. That's awesome. If you're, like, you're learning the lyrics, it's kind of like everyone, everyone's happy. Plus, <laughs> like, I'm not complaining. Plus, Spotify's got, like, amazing algorithms that show people our songs. So, mm. like, thank yeah. you, Spotify. Yeah, and it, it's really convenient <laughs> for the listener because they're getting a whole bunch more than they originally signed up for. So that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out Spotify. Good job. Apple Music, you you're doing all right. You're doing all right. I don't know too much about you, but I'm sure you're great. <laughs> 
So I asked this about Spotify since I feel like there are pros and cons to it. Um, mm. It's great for exposure, as you've mentioned. The algorithms are fantastic. Um, personally, I feel like they can do something slightly better. Like I feel like I shouldn't be seeing your monthly listener count. That's just a personal thing for me. <laughs> That's yeah, mm. I never really thought about that, but yeah, I mean, it is because you know we're always looking at analytics and graphs and you know like how our trajectory is going or whatever and so our monthly listeners is a just another statistic that we see mm. but now that i think of it everyone else seeing that it's like huh true like it, it sort of gives you like, like a, I, I don't mind but yeah <laughs> i was just gonna say it makes people like judge something before they've heard it like that will be like oh yeah. this is what the band with eight thousand monthly listeners sound like or like how many streams the song itself has had yeah. like you don't really see that on apple music or oh i don't think you true do. yeah um, we had never noticed that good yeah. point <laughs> well like we noticed it but like in context to that like yeah. as just like a regular kind of you know listener looking at that never heard of you band before but they're like a oh, thousand monthly listeners i won't bother yeah should be based on the music <laughs> Yeah, yeah, like it's it's definitely. popular for its own reasons, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be like the artist in a nutshell. Yeah, and could be a little part. We need we need more people like you who will do that. Like I swear, <laughs> everyone just clicks on the top song because it's the easiest. It is the easiest. I am one of those people. Our <laughs> <laughs> best song on ours, isn't it? Isn't it Coward? Uh, yeah. Sorry, I just got recommended a country party playlist. Oh, hell yeah. I don't know what to do with that, Yeehaw. but here we are. Yeehaw, my friend. <laughs> and I, anyway. Ooh, I <laughs> think so. the daily mixes also help, like, with exposure sometimes, but then they're not always, I don't know, my daily mixes, I feel like, are very all over the place or very in the same genre. So sometimes it's hard mm. to branch out in that regard, so I just, like, go through Spotify for hours <laughs> and try to find yeah. artists. Honestly, I really haven't, like used or like kind of given daily mix a chance to play and if it's if it's gonna happen i'm like no i want to choose a song and kind of like i'm very picky about like what what i'm listening to in the moment and so like when when it kind of like automatically switches and i'm doing work or something and it goes to like a spotify you know like daily mix or whatever and i don't notice it and a cool song comes on i'm like oh sweet but usually if that happens i'm kind of like oh no i'll pick another one like i, I can do this so I never really give Daily Mix a chance, but I've heard it's good. <laughs> yes. I, I've found so many of my favorite artists through it. Like, well, there you go. <laughs> I, I, I love it. Because, like, I don't know, it, it, it just works. I don't know how they do it. They're smart robots, but it, it just seems to work. They're, they're good robots. Also, the artists recommend, like, when you go to the bottom of the page and you see, like, similar artists. I love seeing that. Yeah. We, um, there's this band called The Fame, and they had an old band called Small Town Heroes, and both of them are on our Artist Recommend, two of the same band. It's like, do, do you want to listen to similar artists? Here's a band that hasn't existed for four years. <laughs> so rude. Spotify. It's still there. <laughs> oh, well. Anyway. <laughs> I feel like it, it's changing with the times. At least it's getting yeah. better. Uh, someone once told me that Spotify or streaming services were the response to people illegally downloading music from LimeWire. <laughs> <laughs> so. oh. Well, they responded in a very orderly fashion and we're all happy with it now. <laughs> I forget. No torrenting needed. I forget that people still do that. People still yeah. like YouTube to MP3 things. Because like, we have a lot of younger fans and they will always be like, showing us their iTunes library where they've, like, YouTube to MP3 and our songs. I'm like, I'm not mad or anything, but I'm just like, I had no idea people still did that. Like, I did it when I was 13, but they're still doing it. Still out lime-wiring it. <laughs> still lime-wiring it. There you go. Getting viruses and everything. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we love it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You get those sites and, and it'd have like 17 versions of the download button. Like, download here. No, download here. Ah, oh, you can download your MP3 here. <laughs> download here! It's like a scavenger hunt to find yeah. the one that isn't a pop up. It's trial and error. Like, you have to be fast so you click off the virus before it gets to your computer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Josh Mayer, everybody. Tech wizard. <laughs> what can I say? Um, if you could change one thing about the music industry as it is today, what would it be and why? God damn. Oh, that's very interesting. <laughs> Stop asking such good questions. <laughs> now I need to think. Change one thing about the industry. I, I think I'm going to start by just rambling on something. Okay. I think that a lot of people like a lot of the higher powers in the industry don't like to be alone in risk taking anymore they don't like to bank on an artist just because they feel it they will like look around the room and be like oh are we feeling this artist guys mm -hmm. and like if a hundred of them don't agree then they won't go with it like no whereas like a long time ago people were much more like going with their instinct like you know you'll have people that one manager that's yeah just like i don't care what all you guys say I'm going to risk it with these guys. But yeah, now there's so many people who are like, well, the the logistics just don't work. Yeah, and or even if they are like, yeah, let's take a risk. It's like, it's a mutual decision, not like a, yeah. a powerful one person decision, which, you know, like, in a sense, I guess it's helpful for the general public. But I don't know, you, there was just something about like, yeah, how I used to be. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it, it means that now, like, the indie artists, like in inverted commas, for everyone listening with the audio. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, the indie artists are like ones that are like Claro and stuff with like, you know, millions and millions of listeners. It's because like they're not indie anymore because they have this it's been massive... a calculated decision to yeah. make them indie. Like, I don't know. I, I sound like a broken record just complaining, but I, I think that a lot more risks should be taken in that sense yeah. to give people a chance. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That. Um, <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, did you think of anything? No, like honestly, that's that's pretty good because I guess like yeah, like modern music in a sense. Like there, I I can't really pinpoint what frustrates, and it's not like the whole thing frustrates me. There's just a little bit that is kind of just a bit like you know, yeah, like Cooper said, like all these indie artists or bedroom pop artists and stuff like Claro or you know like people that have a presence of being very DIY, like, you know, even Billie Eilish, it's kind of, that's one out of 10,000 versions of that. And they took a chance on her because mutually everyone saw potential. It wasn't just one person kind of going like, no, I think this could be something special. So yeah, like Cooper said, like there's, there's not as much kind of uh, personal risk being taken it, it's a lot more calculated it's a little more kind of yeah like looking around the room and going like should we should we not and then basing it off that like yeah. it's a i think it's a hard question for us because we're so used to not dwelling on the problems and just finding the solutions for them yeah we never had the time to just sit down and be bitter like man this industry <laughs> like we're, yeah, we we're... don't because i mean for the most part it's actually good like music's in a really cool place right now and there's so much cool stuff happening and so many like genres and avenues being given a chance like i heard like you know pop punk on the radio the other day and that yeah. just that just went yeah. slip like <laughs> yeah there there are so many positives to what's happening right now and that's what i like to focus on like yeah. charlie xex just dropping an album that she recorded in quarantine like you know ariana grande releasing multiple albums in a year like i'm just so excited for more and more artists to just like take control and just release hella music. We roast them, and then we bring them back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, Matt Claro, she is, she's good, isn't she? <laughs> I love her. <laughs> she's so fabulous. Yeah. I enjoy yeah. what you're saying so much. Like, I know where I am. Um, regular radio, it's like the same 20 songs on repeat. <laughs> and it's frustrating when it's, the same thing over and over and over again and there are so many other artists that should be getting airplay that just don't because they don't fit the mold or aren't what the curator thinks is the what people should be hearing which is so exciting. yeah and like you could like those songs have a certain level of quality to them and there are so many songs like other songs out there that have that same like kind of yeah level and if you were to play 
one new song like every time that you know one of these repeats on radio would come on for like don't hold me to the math to it but like you know like seven years or something of that like you could get a new song every time and it wouldn't be stale because it'd still be really good quality and it'd still be good music but it's again not like taking the risk on it and we don't know much about radio but <laughs> it sucks hearing the same freaking song every <laughs> single time you turn it on and you're just like oh not today <laughs> Hey, yeah, we we totally get that here too. <laughs> like, even though we're an internet college radio, I try to find artists who I think should be given that voice because oh. I think they don't deserve it, and it, it's upsetting when like people don't get to hear such great music. And mm. yeah, it's nice when at least for like, for me, um, sometimes you get feedback from people and they're like, "Oh my god, I discovered this artist that I've never heard of before," and I'm like, "Oh good, like go go yeah. for it." <laughs> Like, that's so much better than getting a text in that's like, oh, man, I love that you played that song again. <laughs> like, like, I heard it I heard it this morning, and then I heard it after lunch, and man, now now I'm having to hear it. I'm so glad you did it again. Like, I could have asked for a better song. The, ne insist. <laughs> the next day, they're like, I, I am getting bored of it now. <laughs> <laughs> you should stop. Yeah, man. Like, and honestly, like, even coming from us, like, you know, obviously, it's amazing that that you gave our band thing a chance, and we love that. But like, to think that you're doing that to other artists that might be the same level, might be lower, might be higher, whatever. Like, you know, artists that wouldn't get the avenue. Like, that's exciting for us. We want to hear new music. We want to find out new people. And like, mm. I don't know. It's it's cool. The more that happens, the more discovery and kind of like you know, random spurts of of incredible artists you can get. Exactly. <laughs> he said. Can you describe your sound for me in three words? You can each do three words or a consecutive yeah. word. Oh my <laughs> Can uh, we have 300? <laughs> I can do this. I can do this. Um, Can you though? Yeah, I swear to God, I can. <laughs> Just give, give me, give me thirty seconds, and I'll be there. Dang. Wait, what was he for? Erratic, demonic, pop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um. I fully agree. I'm going to attempt my own just because I want to fit some more words. Energetic. Mm. Hopefully terrifying. That's two that's, words. No, that's three now. Hopefully terrifying. Oh. <laughs> Do you want to put a hyphen between hopefully terrifying? Yes. Yeah, okay, okay. And hopefully then terrifying. I, I'm going to go for rock at the end because even though rock is like yeah. a genre, I think it's a pretty fitting like umbrella term for what we do. <laughs> we like playing rock. Yeah. I mean, it's obviously it's a million other things, but that's like a nice umbrella. Hopefully and terrifying. Yeah, with a hyphen. It's <laughs> perfect. Like, we you let him off the hook there. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you guys kind of break genres in a sense. Like you're not confined to one genre. You experiment in different avenues, but stay true to this like sound that you have. Yeah. yeah, I mean, well, we we have like a we have so many influences, like it's insane. We just listen to honestly every single genre. Yeah, we like we sound like so many things because we can't decide. But then we always come back to that, like subconsciously, like always. Uh, I guess like gravitate towards that like early two thousands like rock sound that we grew up listening to. It's embedded in our brains. It's like, you know built into our, our system that we just can't shake it. So even when we experiment, like we've experimented with like hip hop, R&B, like rap stuff and, you know, heavy rock and everything. But inevitably there will always be, and whether it's like my voice or the, the way Cooper plays drums and stuff, like it's always going to have a little hint of that kind of like root sound. But that's what kind of makes it cool because it's like defining, you can like, you can pick off on it and be like, that's so Zoo Dream, but at the same time, what the f are they doing? Like, that, that is so whack. Is that a cockroach I heard? What? Like, it, yeah. It, it, like, excites me so much, though. Like, every time we, 
we like break the genre <laughs> and every time we like do something different it reminds me that that's allowed mm. i'm like oh my god wait if we can do that like f- it wait, let's put some jazz in <laughs> yeah like have lounge breakdowns in our songs <laughs> like it just it just reminds it just might me. work <laughs> yeah anything is possible <laughs> When I was God. listening to, I guess, yeah, disco- discography is the right word. Um, I noticed there were so many different things that were going on, but at the same time, it was, it was refreshing for me to not listen to something that around already sounded like something I've already heard before. Oh, that's mm-hmm. sweet. I'm glad. That's exactly yeah, what we want. Like, that's exactly what we want. <laughs> Confusion. Confusion. <laughs> and like. Our- with the, we, we, we aim to confuse and like with the new music that we're writing right now and the sort of like like the different i guess like picture quotation marks risks we're taking it's like you kind of cooper's right like you literally don't have a boundary when it comes to creating music like we could literally just have a sine wave in the middle of the song and we've done that before in a demo, and it just exists. Like, you can do anything, but at the same time, I think there's something to be said that, like, you kind of, there are certain things people pick up on and certain p- things that people relate to or maybe, like, have more of an emotional attachment to. Like, yeah, like, I my girlfriend kind of really is attached to, like, more minor stuff, and then I know people that will just, like, you know, their ears perk up when they hear a kind of, like, happier, boppier tune and stuff. Like, it really affects people differently, so I think that's why we wanted to kind of, at the same time as, you know, be as left of field as possible, also have these little hints and references to things that, like, you know, a wide variety of people can kind of attach themselves to. Mm. That's how you get them. That's how you prank them. You, you give them a little them bit of familiarity, familiarity, tea, and then <laughs> you give them the confusion. It's, it's just, it's a whole circle. It's a proven formula. Honestly. <laughs> Nine <proved> out of... <laughs> Every time. Question, why did I ask? Well, yeah, as you said, it's like you're touching on something familiar, but at the same time, like, for an average listener, yes, I'm going to say an average listener, they're going to nope. pick up on something that is similar, and then they're going to hear different layers to a track. I don't know. Right, I, yeah. Yeah. You said it. You got You it. freaking said it. <laughs> and, like, honestly, because, like, you know, especially when you're making music and writing music there are so many different layers of things that could kind of go either way like you could use a different sound for one melody and it would completely change the mood of a song and you can have like a major chord progression that's played on like a tuba that's distorted or something and it completely changes the vibe i know it's sick let's do that out <laughs> <laughs> I say chord progression as if tubas could play chord progression, root note progression. But <laughs> yeah, like uh, there are so many variables in music. People categorize it in like major or minor. But you could have a minor song that's played on like a harpsichord and it would sound beautiful. Like, yeah, you can really push the boundaries with everything. Exactly. Like you pick up on something new every time. And especially if it's a song that you're really like emotionally invested in. And each layer kind of, like, hits you on a different level. Like, you know, maybe the bass line that you didn't realize it does a cool run at the end. And you're like, ah, that's why I felt that thing at the end. It's because it's, you know, going down or, like, following the vocal or whatever. And, like, there are so many little subtle things that, I guess, like, like you said, like, the average listener won't pick up on. But they'll feel it. And they don't know why they feel it. But that's what makes the song. And that's why some songs don't reach people in the same way that other songs do it's like these little little bits and pieces that just touch my last question for you is what are your goals for 2020 well like all of our original goals for this year were like (laughs) disintegrated so (laughs) we're we're still in perth uh we're meant to be in la right now but we're not and it's kind of like it's been cool because we've we've gotten the chance to like write a whole bunch more and do a whole lot more planning and talking to people and everything. It's it's like the housework that you kind of you have in the house, but you don't get around to it until you have that one day off work or whatever. Like, 
Anyway, our plans. Uh, we want to come back to the U.S. next year, and we want to keep growing our audience over there because it's been really cool with TikTok and all these other kind of social media platforms that we've been able to reach a whole bunch of people there and like way more than we would have had last year. So definitely want to come back and uh, yeah, write you, more songs. I want to just keep writing. You said we can do it for the decade and I'm going to choose that one. Oh God, you're... <laughs> My goal Buckle up. <laughs> for the decade is to play... He wants, to play, Square Garden. <laughs> he wants to play Madison Square Garden. I want to as well. There are so many venues in the world, and that's the one you choose. It's because Justin Bieber played there in like his his uh, Never Say Never documentary, and Cooper's held that in his heart, and it will not leave. He wore that purple hoodie, and he just said, "I want to play. I want to play um, uh, Hammerstein Ballroom." in Manhattan what because that? that was on the all time low DVD mm. and it's just stuck in my brain and I want to play it because that looks like a dope venue. <laughs> but on the real, I think my goal, like to be super broad about it, I want us to keep being super experimental. Um, do lots of weird things. Lots of them. So be, many. Be as uncomfortable amount. <laughs> yes. Be uncomfortable. Be as creative as we possibly can be. And share that with a huge amount of people. Like, yeah. honestly, I just want the like the amount of people we have now is so beautiful, and like seeing it grow, just like by any amount makes us happy. So for that to get to like a huge scale, possibly worldwide, possibly um, universe wide. Universe wide. I'd like to play on Mars. It's not off the cards. <laughs> We're talking a decade here. It could. Mm. Honestly, Elon Musk hit us up. <laughs> like, let's go. Yeah, so we wanted to uh, um, to Mars. That's, yeah. that's the punchline. There you go. <laughs> it's headline material. Those who dream on the to tour to Mars? Question mark. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. I mean, obviously, like, right now, no one can really go to venues, and it's all, like, kind of slammed. But I would love to come to New York, and especially Manhattan, and just, like, yeah, play play one of the, the cool local venues, too. Like, L.A. had so many cool places, like the Troubadour, like, um... Wait, where'd you get mugged? Uh, <laughs> That's a true story. <laughs> Long story, but a true story. We we met five seconds of summer like ten minutes before that, <laughs> and oh um, uh, uh, Sayers Club in yeah in Hollywood. Hollywood. Anyway, my point is yeah those little venues that hold like a hundred people, but like in a different city that we've never been to. Like that's such a cool idea, and I just love the vibe of being in a room with like you know a, a healthy amount of people that haven't heard of us, but it's not like you know a stadium of people that haven't heard of us. Like we can just like get this crowd going and kind of do that so mm, it's manageable it's manageable <laughs> yeah so that's that's like what excites me about like traveling and starting out kind of like at these smaller venues is it's actually a whole bunch of fun just being real up close to people and having a party in like a place you've never been to yeah that'd be cool <laughs> that'd be swell <clears throat> is that gonna be the last the last thing we say, that'd, that'd be swell. Be swell. <laughs> and that's, and that's... <laughs> you never heard from them again. <laughs> and then I'll ask one more thing. Is there anything you would like to tell your your fans and our listeners? Dream Monster, new song coming out sometime. Yep, sometime. And um, I'll hail the eyeball lord, because he, he watches over all of us, and he will never go away. Thank you for listening. He said it. <laughs> Goodbye. Dream Monster. <laughs> Thank you guys again. We had Thank fun. you. See ya. See ya. Bye.